It was a dark and foggy Halloween's night on the island. All work had been completed for the day, bar pilot's final shunting duties. The fog conjured images of long lost trains fruitlessly attempting to make it home. Pilot completed the last of his jobs and hurriedly returned to Alfreston Roundhouse to find it full of engines merrily chatting away. Ah, the engine himself. Come in, grab a shed road. We were just telling some ghost stories. Ghost stories? Yes, ghost stories, you know. I was telling them about the lost Roman legion. And we've heard about the Beast of Bloodmore. All very good choices, excellent island legends, but... But, but? I can't help but wonder, what has brought that on? Oh, you know, the dark, the fog, and it just so happens to be Halloween-y. Halloween? How could I forget? In that case, drop in, my lovelies. I've got a tale to tell. It was a dark night, not too dissimilar to this one, and funnily enough, the same day. All Hallows' Eve, 1945. This was even before I'd gained my spark arrestor, so I looked somewhat different. Normal, you might say. I'd recently been repainted back to GWR Green, and I'd been tasked with taking a small consignment of goods to Castle Stavell. It was a fairly routine job. Coal, metal sheeting, and other engineering parts were required at the castle to keep the heating system in order. I had to stop to pin down my wagon's brakes at the top of the hill near Stobra, and to stop at the bottom of the hill to release the brakes again. I was waiting on the viaduct over the river Stoke for my guard to finish releasing the brakes, when a thick fog seemed to roll in over the river. In the time it took for the guard to be done, the fog got so thick I could hardly see the signal in front of me. All that was visible was the light piercing through. Oh, bum baskets, now I have to go slow and I'll be late to the castle. And they'll all be waiting for me in the shed. How fucking delightful. With my brakes released, I continued into the fog. of Stobra, my driver was startled by the sight of a distant signal that was on. What's so scary about a distant signal? Just you wait. We slowed down, and through the fog came the sight of a station. I could see people walking about the platform, keeping lamps lit and moving parcels about the place. I had to stop, as the signal at the end of the platform was red. I noticed a man walking up to me. He looked young and excited. Any chance we can borrow a small sack of coal from your wagon? Our waiting room fire is dying out, and we haven't any more. Yes, of course. Help yourself. I'm sure Lord Stavell won't mind. His lordship is indeed very kind. He does us islanders proud. I can't wait to follow in his footsteps. <laughs> That's right, my lad. Keep dreaming. One day you might run the railway. Oh, not that. Did you not hear about his exploits in the Boer War? I hope I can make him proud. The Boer War? Yes, he's a war hero. Saved his entire unit for sure. Oh, you've been called up for national service? No, I volunteered. I just hope I can see action before the end of the war. But haven't you heard? The war is over. That's what they keep saying. Well, they say it'll be over by Christmas. I just hope I can get out there and show the Hun a few things before it's over. But the war is over, we won! There was a bell sign from the station building. Oh, that's the hospital train. I've got to go. Thank you for the coal. I watched the man drag away the sack of coal. Then a thought struck me. The hospital train wouldn't be able to get through till I cleared the single line section. But suddenly, there it was, coming straight towards me. I whistled in horror and looked away. It diverged right at the last minute and came to a stop at the old platform next to me. Not knowing what to think, I gazed fixated at the signal, willing it to drop and let me out of the nightmare that had befallen me. 
The signal finally dropped, and I departed that station as fast as I could. As soon as I exited the short tunnel just after the station, the fog disappeared and sound seemed to return once more. There was something I hadn't noticed in the fog. Driver, can we please go home via the main line? Unfortunately not. The main line is closed so they can relay the track. Okay, well, can I not go and sleep at Retford? No. Stoma? No. Can we stay here? Nope. Oh, oh crumbs. I headed back down the hill towards the station. As I got to the level section at the valley floor, I became tense as I expected to see the fog rising against the black of the night. But no. Nothing. As I edged closer to the station, the overwhelming sense of dread took over. I crept into the tunnel, and as I emerged the other side, nothing. The dark blanketed the station, the light was noticeably absent. Nothing stirred but the wind in the overgrowth on the platforms. Gone were the staff, a station devoid of life. Instead of making me feel better, this sight of the station in its derelict state, as I should have remembered, scared me even more as I realised that the thing I couldn't recall before was the fact that Little Stobra Station which had been closed since before I was built, as all the station staff never returned from the Great War. I've never told this story. Not since the night it happened. Why did you sit on it for so long? Someone like you, a conspiracy nut. Well, no one believed me. That's never stopped you before. Yes, but this was one I've actually witnessed, first hand. My memory's a proof of its existence. Wow. That's deep for you. Look, I'm the only one who remembers it. My crew have no recollection of it, and the inventory of the train's cargo showed nothing amiss. That coal was still accounted for when it arrived at the castle. Well, I believe you if it's any consolation. But you don't look too good, pilot. Y you're all right. Yeah, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take a breather outside. What, out in the fog? Yeah, don't worry, I'll be fine. It's only fog, after all. Thank you.